Baker Mayfield win the Heisman Trophy? I mean, that man's a com competitor. Uh, you know, he gives it his all every game. And I, I think the fans see that and everybody else sees that. Um, he, he, I mean, my mom says he's just like me. I mean, we're, we're, we're both just competitive as ever. And, um, I mean, he, he's just he's, he's amazing. I mean, the things that he does on the field and uh, he takes care of himself <laughs> off the field. He's just such a leader. I mean, why not be the, be the Heisman? Do you think someone like him really encourages other walk-ons even, saying, hey, if this guy can do what he's done, maybe I can make my dream come true as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you see where he's come from and, um, you know, how much he's grown over the years and come from a walk-on to uh, getting to be on scholarship and now he's in the Heisman race, I mean, uh, he definitely encourages other people. Do you have a favorite catch throughout your career, maybe a favorite touchdown? I get asked that all the time, but I don't. I can't. I don't think there's like just one favorite one that stands out to me. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of just like just one. <laughs> you, guys, you guys obviously have a lot more work ahead of you, but mm -hmm. when you think about where you guys have gotten yourself to at this point, what do you most credit with, um, especially this stretch run after the Texas game? What changed most in your mind to get you guys to this point? Uh, just a mentality change. I say that all the time. Uh, after the Texas game, I feel like it was just a whole mentality switch. Um, we sat down as a group, as a unit, and just said that some things had to change, and um, we did a great job of changing them and uh, sticking with it throughout the season. I mean, that nine-game stretch is is uh, pretty hard on your body, but everybody stuck to um, kind of what we knew. And, um, uh, yeah, like I said, the mentality just changed for us. How, how difficult is that type of thing? I mean, you've been on a lot of teams that, you know, you, you go through adversity and you try to adjust to actually have been able to do that. How difficult a, a task was that for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I've been on both sides. Um, you know, things just snowball and uh, can get worse on from, from there. But uh, we made it up in our minds that things were going to go uphill. And um, when, when we got to rolling, that things weren't going to stop. And, um, I mean, it is difficult because, uh, like I said, I've been on both sides. But um, I feel like the game after, uh, we got things rolling. And uh, we stuck with, the, stuck with what worked. And uh, we were able to keep, keep, keep it going. You guys had nine games in a row where, mm -hmm. with no bye week. And you could just kind of focus on practice and, and getting better. How do you keep that momentum going now that you're going into some downtime here? Uh, I mean, I've, I feel like our bodies needed a little bit of rest, uh, especially after the nine-game stretch. Um, a lot of guys are banged up, so this just gives us a little bit of time of recovery. And, um, uh, you know, guys will still be in the film room, um, you know, taking mental reps. And uh, but, but ultimately, I just think it, it's a great time for us to rest up our bodies. Um, we've been banged up a lot. You guys have also kind of been able to keep that chip on your shoulder. <coughs> now, I mean, I'm watching a lot of shows yesterday. They're talking about Oklahoma as the favorite to to win the whole thing. How do you keep that that chip on your shoulder when everybody's praising you now for how you finish the season? Well, I, f I feel like the past few weeks, a lot of, a lot of people have been praising us. It's just a matter of us, um, you know, sticking to what we do, what we do best, and not paying attention to all the outside stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you just you just got to kind of turn a blind eye to it and uh, not not pay attention to it. Uh, it's hard to do with you know all the social media and everything, but uh, you know, we got we, we just have to focus on us. Sterling, you said the mentality change. Did you change anything about your approach to the game after Texas? Uh, I can't say just me personally. I'm just saying it's like a unit we changed. Um, you know, the line came together and they, they, uh, they fixed what they had to fix. And as a unit of wide receivers, um, you know, we had to do a better job blocking downfield. And that's one of the things that we made a big emphasis on. And um, we did a great job uh, changing that. I mean, you see Samaje and them busting big runs. And uh, without us blocking downfield, it wasn't going to happen. And Texas game, we didn't do a good job of that. Sterling, the last three games, you've had more catches yards and touchdowns and everyone else on the team combined. How have you been able to continue to get better as the season is going on? Uh, you know, preparation, preparation. Um, that's, that's been the big thing. Uh, staying consistent at practice and, um, 
you know, just trying to be sharp on everything in practice. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the main thing. There was just defending you differently maybe the second half of this season than they did at the beginning with other receivers emerging and maybe the running game emerging, or is it pretty much the same what you're seeing out there? Yeah, it's the same. Pretty much the same. It seemed like there was a certain edge to your team's preparation for the Sugar Bowl for Alabama. We hear a lot about the good practices leading up to that. Is it, can that be used as a blueprint going into this college football playoff? Yeah, I mean, we just have to prepare like we have been uh, these past few games. Um, I feel like if we do that, then, then we'll be in the best position to win the game. Well, offensive coordinators taking a lot of time to get their new offenses installed. What's made it easy for you guys to be as potent as you guys are under Lincoln Riley and his new system? Uh, he makes everything simple. I mean, it's not you don't have to think that much, and uh, it's just easy to, to learn his system. He, he tries to make it as simple as possible. I think. Did you expect to be in this place in, the, in this season as potent as you guys have been? Yeah, I mean, that's what this offense is about, is putting up big numbers and uh, scoring a lot of points. And, um, you know, when, after the game, you know, we're not, we're not supposed to be excited. That's just what we're supposed to do. That's what this offense is all about. Um, so, yeah. I know, I know you, you probably haven't been on campus as much being an older guy, but when you're mm -hmm. getting in and off the bus, going to the hotels and stuff, do you kind of sense the Baker mania a little bit that's out there? The Baker mania. Baker Mayfield mania. I mean, is it? Is it? I mean, it seemed like after the you know after the games, after your big wins, it's just mm -hmm. fans can't get enough of him. And, you know, him celebrating, and is there kind of a craziness around him at all? Uh. I mean, I, I don't I don't see it that much on campus. Like I said, I don't, I'm not on campus that much. But uh, yeah, after the games, I mean, people love Baker. I mean, he's just a guy that you love being around too, uh, with all the energy and excitement that he brings. Uh, so yeah, the fans love him. Sterling, it seemed like Bob's best teams, or some of his best teams since he's been here, have been teams that have continued to improve as the years gone on. Clearly, you guys fit in that more. <coughs> you talked about the players being central to getting things turned around. But talk about the coaches' role. What have you seen from them and sort of helping you guys on that trajectory? Yeah, uh, I mean, it wasn't just – it wasn't us versus them. It was uh, we all needed to come together and do something. And um, I remember Coach Riley after the uh, Texas game, he was even saying that we have to make changes as coaches as well. And, um, you know, they he laid out a, a kind of a blueprint of uh, what we needed to do and what we needed to get better on. and. Um, he stuck to that, and we stuck to what we said we were going to do, and uh, just kind of gelled them together, and it's worked out for us. Were there big changes involved from, like, talking about Coach Riley, or was it reps, or what, what sort of things did they lay out for you guys? Well, it, was, it, it was mainly, I think, one of the big points that we all came to a conclusion on was we had to play faster. And, um, you know, we, we really amped up the speed after the Texas game and uh, on how fast we play. And um, it worked out for us. Do you remember much when you were a kid about being around that 2000 team that won a national championship? Uh, no, I remember I went to the, to the game, but uh, I don't remember too much about it. Uh, it was pretty exciting, though. I mean, but you, you've been around this program as they've tried to win another one. What, I mean, how special has that been that, you know, your senior year you put yourself in a position where you guys might be able to accomplish that goal? Yeah, I mean, I said at the beginning of the season, this, this school is – known for winning championships and uh, being one of those top tier programs and uh, I was going to do everything possible that I could uh, to get us back to that point and um, you know us as senior leaders uh, we've done a great job of just uh, keeping everybody focused and um, showing everybody that we have a goal and that we're trying to get to and uh, we're not going to stop until we get it. Samaj is just such a humble person is it hard to imagine what this program would be without him in the backfield? Yeah, seriously. I mean, he, he's one of those guys that's gonna that's gonna bang for the team and um, tough runner. I mean, without him, uh, you know, it's, it, it'd be rough. I mean, he's he's a great back to have on your team. Anything else for Sterling? Any chance we could see the backflip you did after the game? <laughs> you created here. I don't know about that. I, I got I got a little. Uh, everybody got on to me about that, saying I was going to get hurt, so no more backflipping, I guess. <laughs> was it Duran? Quick and Neil were doing yeah, it too, weren't they? Yeah, Duran and Quick as well. Yeah, but the best flipper is probably Daniel Brooks. He's He could just flip all the way down the field. <laughs>
instantaneous, or did you guys have that in the back? You know, the I don't know. We, I, I guess one of us saw each other flipping, right. and we all started flipping. <laughs>